Well, hello and welcome to the good old days of radio show. You can see me. I exist. I am not just a voice crying out from your speakers. I actually can be seen. This is John Tifteller, the host of the good old days of radio show. We're going to do something different today. Uh, the reason we're going to do something different today is all my request. And I put producer Daniel through a whole bunch of hoops and <laughs> hoops and loops to make all this happen. But um, we're going to do a special broadcast today. Um, it is my birthday. I'm 65 years old today. December 26th, 1958 was my birth date. And this is December 26th, 1920. No, 2023, not 1920. Um, and so my request for my birthday show, my special birthday show, is to do an episode of Groucho Marx's You Bet Your Life. And we're not just going to play an episode. We're going to actually let you in on the secrets behind the show. You're going to see the original script, and you're going to follow along as they did the show back then. And you're going to see that it's not exactly following the original script. Um, the, many of you know this, but some don't. But when I was 16 years old, I got hired to be Groucho's uh, recording engineer and record him whenever he did things in public. He didn't do a lot of things in public back then, but he still did some. And I was the official recording engineer for those events. I have a photo here to prove it. So if you look at that, you see me with brown hair instead of gray hair, and you see Groucho seated at his piano in his living room. He had just finished playing um, Lydia the Tattooed Lady and posed for this picture with me. I was instructed to crouch down by the piano and look up at the camera. The, the reason there was a camera is uh, Kodak had sent over some brand new cameras as a gift for Groucho, and they wanted to try them out and see if they worked. They were Polaroid cameras, so they pulled out one of the Kodak Polaroid cameras, told me to go sit down, uh, kneel on the floor next to him at the piano, and they shot this photograph and a few others, which I don't need to show right now. But anyway, just proof. I know what I'm talking about here. So, okay. One other thing I thought I would share before we get to the show is... A lot of people who listen to this show have really no idea how we get these radio programs, where they come from. And I've talked about it and talked about it over many episodes. But I thought since we have a camera and since it's turned on, I would give you listeners, now viewers, the opportunity to actually see an original transcription disc. And so I'm going to reach over here and grab one and hold it up to the camera, and I'll let the, the transcription disc take my place on screen. This is a 16-inch record. It's made of lacquer, which is lacquer, and then glued onto aluminum. So if you tap it, it's an aluminum record with a lacquer coating. This is an episode of Suspense with Ronald Coleman called August Heat, which I'm not sure if we've featured on the Good Old Days of Radio Show podcast yet or not, but that's what they look like. They are large records. They take special, special playback equipment. There you can see the grooves. Special play, playback equipment, special needles, and we take those and we play them, and make digital files out of them, and that's how you get to hear these shows. It's how they were recorded back in the 40s. There was no such thing as tape until Bing Crosby brought it to America in the late 40s, but before that, everything was these 16-inch transcriptions. So many of them have been lost or destroyed or recycled for their aluminum content, but we save as many as we can, and there are. I'm sitting in my um, good old days of radio show studio here, and we have boxes of them behind me, boxes of them in front of me, boxes of them out in the hallway, shelves filled with them everywhere, and it's just overload of radio transcription discs. But that's how we get the shows that we bring you on the good old days of radio show, besides borrowing them from friends and other nice people who help us when we can't find a certain thing. So that's it. So today, Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life. Um, we have scripts. 
original bound volumes of You Bet Your Life scripts, and we've chosen one. The one I've chosen for today is the January 4th, 1950 NBC broadcast. It happens to be the very first broadcast with the new sponsor, DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. Before You Bet Your Life was sponsored by DeSoto, it was sponsored by Elgin American Compacts, uh, which is like a women's makeup kit type thing. But in 1950, they switch, switched sponsors over to DeSoto Plymouth, the new DeSoto Plymouth cars. And so we have the first show from that. And we're going to show you the actual script and we're going to follow along as they do it. And then I believe producer Daniel is going to have at the end of the podcast for today, the show uninterrupted, but we're going to interrupt it as we go along to show you what they did when they were uh, pre-recording the show. The show was pre-recorded usually a week before they would go anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour. Um, and then they would go in the editing room and cut it down to the half hour that you would see and or hear. Um, this was the, the radio version, which was usually slightly different from the television version. They would use things that came out uh, in the filming that were more um, visually based for the television show and things that were just could get away with more pure audio was used for the radio show. So each one of the You Bet Your Life programs was slightly different in what you would see on, on television versus what you would hear in the radio version. So if you got to collect them all, you have to have all the radio versions and all the television versions. I do not have any television scripts. Um, they actually shot it as if it was a radio show and then... Um, put it on radio and television at the same time. So I'm going to pause and we're going to go over and to the setup where we have the script lined up for you and we will start the program. All right, here we are. Um, you don't necessarily see me at this point and you're used to that anyway, so we're good. Um, here we are with the original script for the broadcast of uh, you Bet Your Life. If you notice here up at the top, it says file, and they've crossed that out and wrote bind, which means they wanted to put it in a binder, which they have. This is the binder, which they did a series of scripts. Um, these were originally John Goodell's personal copies. John Goodell was the producer of the show. Soto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, number 75. Uh, I'm not sure what 1-D refers to. Recording date was December 22nd, 1949 in Studio C at CBS Radio in Hollywood, which is KNX, uh, KNX on Sunset Boulevard. Uh, they scheduled to record between 9 and 9.30, but that is not correct. They would go however long they needed to go. They might start at 9, but they might finish up at 10 or um, 9.45 or whenever they thought they had enough for a show. And then broadcast date, January 4th, 1950, um, from 6 to 6.30 p.m., which is a little weird because that, that's early in the evening and you bet your life was normally on prime time. So maybe at this particular time they were airing at 6 to 6.30, but later on it aired at 8 o'clock. Uh, so that's, that's it for the opening page. Um, we're going to start the show and flip the page. And so we'll follow along, and there's a lot of changes that go on here, so we'll be kind of stopping and starting and flipping pages so you can get an idea of what they actually did when the, the lights went on and the, the cameras rolled and the tape rolled and the program was in progress of recording. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is tree, T-R-E-E. -E. Really? You bet your life! The DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! When did he get out? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx! Well, here I am again, starting off the new year with a new sponsor. 
Now, before we go any further, I want everybody to run down to the corner and say hello to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. As long as you're down there, you might as well buy one. <laughs> George Fenneman, who's first to take a whack at the $1,000 tonight? A bachelor and a spinster, Groucho, selected by our studio audience just before we went on the air. And here they are, Miss Mary Hopkins and Mr. Oscar Lind. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, youngsters, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. Miss uh, Hopkins, uh, Mary Hopkins. Okay. Uh, you're a spinster? Yes, I am. Wait, where are you from, Mary? Well, originally from Newark, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Why'd you leave there? Weren't there any eligible bachelors in Newark? <laughs> <laughs> no, I came out to California with the Prudential Insurance Company. Well, that's good policy to follow, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Os Oscar Lind, is that right? That's right. Related to Jenny Lind? She's my sister. <laughs> I have a sister by that name. But it's not, not the other Jenny Lind. No, no. You're a bachelor, and uh, where are you from, Batch? Well, I'm originally from Chicago. Why'd you leave? Weren't there any eligible spinsters there? Oh, yes, there were. Mm -hmm. That's why I left. <laughs> how, how old are you? I'm 51. 51, huh? And Miss uh, Hopkins? Uh, close to 40. <laughs> how close, Mary? <laughs> oh, I still have a couple of years to go. Which way? <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop it there. In the um, program, they actually skip multiple pages of dialogue. And we're going to show those pages, at least so you can see what was supposed to have been said. And either it was cut out before it uh, made the airwaves, or they actually just skipped over it and didn't do it. So anyway, uh, following along... Uh, Groucho continues his questioning of the couples, and you can see those, and we'll leave you enough time here to read them, and then we'll turn the page, and you can see the next page. Okay, now is this where it picks up here? Okay, so now we're going to go back to the recording because now we're up to page seven, three pages totally tossed out the window, and he picks up here. I can't understand a girl as pretty as you not being married. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you're a very attractive couple. Now, let's see what you have in common. Uh, Miss uh, Hopkins, which do you prefer, the gay sporting type or the quiet, shy, unconscious type? Well, I think I like a little of each. <laughs> Oscar, are you gay, debonair, and witty? No, not exactly Well, are you shy, quiet, and unconscious? <laughs> oh, I think I'm a little of each Well, that's a nice combination, huh? He's half witty and half unconscious <laughs> Oscar, I trapped you into that You can forget the whole thing Let's pretend it never happened uh -huh. <laughs> Well, I always think it's fair that a couple about to be married should know each other's bad habits. <laughs> well, what, what about the bad habits? Do you have any bad habits, Oscar? I snore a little. <laughs> How do you know you snore? My sandwich. That's what they tell me. That's what they tell you, huh? Oscar, who tells you that? My family. Your family? Yeah. You mean Jenny Lynn comes in and tells you that? Where, uh, where does Jenny Lynn live? Over in Englewood. Mm -hmm. And you snore clear across town, huh? <laughs> Well, you're both good kids, and inasmuch as you'll soon be married in just one minute... You're going to have a chance to make $1,000. And now, here is news about the first showing of the greatest new model which has ever borne the name DeSoto.
It will be on display at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers on Tuesday, January 10th. A new model in every sense of the word, because it is new from bumper to bumper. The smart-looking full-width front grille gives this car a look of power, which its high-compression engine so justly deserves. Its graceful new back has sleek new lines, new fenders that have a graceful sweep to them that will serve to make DeSoto the car that catches the eye of everyone who appreciates beauty of line and clean modern design. Yet, with all its style advantages, here is a practical car, a car that delivers such operating economy that it will truly delight you. It has more visibility in its big rear window, which has also been lowered for comfortable vision. Bigger brakes with less pedal pressure. A truly roomy trunk. Chair-high seats. Wide, wide doors. And, of course, being a DeSoto, it lets you drive without shifting. Tuesday, January 10th is the day to see it. The first day. Don't miss the unveiling which takes place at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, let's see if you two are going to be our winning couple and get a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that $20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $1,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's going on out here. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected current popular tunes as your category. Is that right? Now here's your first question. You have twenty dollars. How much are you gonna bet? Ten. Jerry Fielding will play. You give me the name of the song. Oh, uh, gentle people. Come on, out the whole the whole title now. Dear hearts and Dear gentle. Dear heart and gentle people is right. Ah, they're on their way. They have thirty dollars, Gracho. Now you've got thirty dollars. Remember, you're going for a thousand dollars tonight. How much of the thirty dollars will you try? Twenty. What is the name of this song? Don't Cry Joe. Don't Cry Joe is correct. They're climbing, Groucho. They have $50. All right, you're climbing. You got $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 will you try? 30, 40. Talk up. Remember, you're going to be married soon, so you'll have to start talking to each other. 40. You're going to try $40. Give me the title of this song. Play, Jerry. What is it? Come on, take a stab. Nothing? Oh. Well, I'm sorry. It's slipping around. Oh, yes. They slipping now have around. $10. That's oh. a shame. You still got a chance with the big money. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the 10 are you going to go for? Five. Five? Is that all right with you, Oscar? Anyone about Oscar, stop dreaming of Jenny <laughs> Lind. <here. laughs> we'll bet the 10. Let's see if you can identify this song. I can dream. I can dream, can I, is correct. And they wind up with $20. You wound up with 20 bucks. Thanks and good luck from your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Now, don't go away. You still have a chance at the big question. Groucho, the secret word is still tree. I know it, George. Perhaps the next couple will say it, though. We asked for some housewives who lived in Hollywood, and just before we went on the air, Mrs. Etta Turkle was selected to be on the show. Her partner is the Honorable Gordon L. McDonough, member of the United States House of Representatives. And here they are, folks, meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> Welcome to You Bet Your Life and a Happy New Year. And if one of you says the DeSoto Plymouth secret word, he wins $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. Honorable Gordon L. McDonough, eh? You're, you're a congressman. Eh? That's correct. Is everybody honorable in Congress? Uh... <laughs> I certainly hope so. How long have you been in Congress? I mean, in... Uh... <laughs> I mean, uh, in, in Congress. This is my third term. Third time, eh? You better look out. Uh, one more offense and you'll get life. <laughs> I, are you married, uh, Gordon? Oh, yes. Who was the Speaker of the House? Sam Rayburn. <laughs> Okay, um, if you were watching this, he jumped, (laughs) 
jumped through a bunch of questions and went to something else. So now we're on another page. Um, we'll pick it up from there, but uh, did we leave it long enough so they can see the... the okay. All right. So we're, we're now skipped ahead. Um, continue. Now, come now. You're not married to Sam Rayburn. <laughs> Who's the speaker in your house? Oh, Mrs. McDonough, of course. Any little minority, minority parties at home? <laughs> yes, I have a family. How many squawkers do you have? Aha, uh -huh, now they've gone back. So he skipped ahead a page, and then he went back a page to pick up some things he didn't say earlier. So here we go. Seven. <laughs> Raising your own votes, eh? <laughs> yes, they're all able to vote. Uh, can I ask who they vote for? You can guess. So can you, you know. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Teichel, is that right? That's right. What, what does your husband do, uh, Mrs. Teichel? He's a salesman. What does he sell? Siding for homes. Siding? For homes. I mean, what, what kind of... Well, we've jumped off again somewhere. Um, not sure where he comes back to this, but uh, he's, he's moved again further down the script. So we'll just uh, leave this on there long enough so you can see where we're at, and we'll continue on. Is it insiding or outsiding? Or... <laughs> uh, Etta, how old are you? Are you are you old enough to vote? Yes. How long have you been voting? Fifteen years. <laughs> Add to that twenty-one. Wow. That makes you thirty-six. Is is that right? Well, make it thirty-four. <laughs> you were voting illegally two years. <laughs> As a voter, do you feel there's anything wrong with the country, Etta? Well, I think so. Nothing serious. No. Well. What? Taxes are going up. Employment is going down. Well, look, Etta, if you feel that way about it, why don't you squawk about it? I do. Well, who do you squawk to? My husband. <laughs> What does he say? Well, he don't say anything. He just sits there and listens to the radio. Why don't you complain to your congressman? Who is your congressman? Well, begins with a T. I'm not sure of his name. Is it Truman? <laughs> no, he's from Missouri. <laughs> Didn't you say you lived in Hollywood? Yes. Well, uh, shake hands with your congressman. <laughs> There's two more votes for you, Gordon. <laughs> Didn't you know that Mr. McDonough was your representative in Washington? I had no idea. <laughs> Can you tell me who played Red Butler in Gone with the Wind? Clark Gable. <laughs> well, Congressman, my advice to you is to get a job in the movies playing Congressman. <laughs> what is your party, uh, Etta? You don't have to answer that, but if you don't, we well, throw you in jail. I don't, I don't pick the party, it's the man. You voted for Clark Gable, huh? <laughs> now, uh, Mrs. Teichel, I don't mean to be too hard on you. Most of us don't know our congressman. In fact, if it wasn't for Barclay's marriage, I wouldn't know it was vice president. <laughs> Do you have any special job in Washington, Gordon? I'm a member of the Public Works Committee and also a member of Subcommittee on Flood Control. The public gets the works from every committee in Washington. <laughs> Have you been the author of any important bills? Yes, I'm the author of the bill that's now in, being investigated right here in Los Angeles for a, an Air Force Academy and also for the uh, improvement of the Los Angeles Post Office. I obtained $1,760,000 for that during the last Congress. What's that? Uh, put uh, fresh ink in the... No. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Do you have any message for the voting public, uh, Congressman? Remember, this is only a half-hour program. Well, of course, the important thing is to let your congressman know how you feel. Mm -hmm. I see. Mrs. Uh, Tackle, how do you feel? Oh, fine. <laughs> well, that's what you wanted to know, wasn't it, Gordon? <laughs> Well, Congressman McDonough, it's been a privilege to have you here. And when you get back to Washington, I want you to stand up there on the floor of the house and tell them Mrs. Teichel is feeling just fine. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Now let's play the DeSoto Plymouth game. You bet your life for $1,000. You run your $20 no more than our other couples, and you get a chance at the big question. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The Bachelor and the Spinster won $20. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected nicknames of states as your category. Is that correct? That's right. All right. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to shoot for? Ten. All right. What state is known as the Hoosier State? Indiana. Indiana is right. And they're on their way, Groucho, with $30. Oh, remember, you're going for $1,000 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to try? Twenty. Three of them. All right. What state is known as the Free State? Mrs. Teichel, you can think too, you know. <laughs> oh, I just came to see. Well, uh, I'm sorry, the bell is tolled and it's, it's Maryland. Now you only have $10, is that right? Mm, right. $10. How much are you going to try now? Ten. <laughs> $10. Okay, what state is known as the Show Me State? Missouri. Missouri is correct. <laughs> And they're on their way again. They have $20. All right, now you're climbing. You got 20 bucks. How much are you going to try of the 20? Uh, 20. <laughs> what state is known as the bluegrass state? Kentucky. Kentucky is right. And they wind up with a grand total of $40. Thanks and good luck from your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Well, we'll soon know who's going to be tops tonight and get the chance at the $1,000. Fenneman, who's leading? Well, the housewife and the congressman are ahead with $40. And Groucho, the secret word is still tree. It is. <laughs> we invited some sailors to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected apprentice seaman John Stafford, and his partner is Admiral Frederick C. Sherman. And here they come. Gentlemen, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers, mates. And if one of you says the secret word, he wins $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. An admiral and a sailor, eh? Uh, sailor, where are you from? Arkansas. Where are you stationed now? Terminal Island. John Staff Stafford, is that right? Yes, sir. You related to uh, Joe Stafford, the singer? No, sir. You wish you were? Yes, sir. <laughs> admiral uh, Sherman, is that right? Where are you stationed, Admiral? I'm not stationed anywhere. I'm retired. Why don't you wear your uniform? Man? Don't you ever wear it anymore? Well, when I'm retired, I'm not supposed to wear the uniform oh. except on uh, national holidays or occasions of great ceremony. Mm -hmm. Well, do you wear it around the house? <laughs> no. Never put it on? Not in a long time. Does it fit anymore? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I think it still fits. <laughs> oh, you have tried it on there. <laughs> Oh, by the way, do you, do you kids know each other? Fred, uh, shake hands with Joe here, huh? How you doing, sir? Sailor, you look nervous. Uh, is this the first time you've uh, been close to a microphone, John? Well, it's the uh, first time I've been close to an admiral. <laughs> Say, the admiral looks a little nervous, too. <laughs> Maybe he's never been this close to a sailor. <laughs> Fred, Fred, uh, I'd call you Fred. Uh, you don't want me to keep calling you Admiral, do you? No. You're just wearing your suit around the house. And... <laughs> uh, th this is not said in any derogatory sense, Fred, but what kind of an Admiral are you? Huh? Well, uh, I'm what they call a full Admiral. You mean you just ate? <laughs> What other kind of admirals are there? Empty admirals? No, they are. Fred, w would you enlighten me? What, what kind of admirals are there? Vice admirals. Uh, vice. Well, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> John, uh, uh, what, what is your title in the Navy? Seaman Apprentice. How long have you been in the uh, service? Just several months. And what did you... Uh, Start out with, huh? What rank? Seaman apprentice. <laughs> well, don't look now, but your rank is dragging, huh? <laughs> are, are you married, uh, sailor? No. No what? I'm not married. <laughs> is that the way you bring up these sailors, Admiral? <laughs> no, 
sir. Tell him what to say, Admiral. Say no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> I'll pipe you over, boy. <laughs> I wish I knew what that meant, man. Right? <laughs> I'd pipe him at that if I wasn't smoking a cigar. Right? <laughs> now then, are you married? No, sir. <laughs> Admiral, what about you? Before you got married, did you have a girl in every port? No, that's an old myth. I don't care how old she is. is <laughs> you didn't have a girl in every port? Did you have some port in every girl? Huh? <laughs> uh, Admiral Shaman, uh, how, how long have you been in the Navy? Well, I had almost 41 years service when I retired. What was your biggest mistake? Well, when I was a student aviator down in Pensacola, I tried to taxi a 105-foot wing-spread airplane through an 80-foot drawbridge. <laughs> that wasn't when you retired, though, huh? <laughs> what was your most exciting experience, Admiral? Well, I think it was when I was uh, captain of the aircraft carrier Lexington in the Battle of Coral Sea, and the Lexington was damaged and had to be sunk later by our own torpedoes. What was your biggest thrill, uh, Admiral? When I stood on the bridge of Missouri and Tokyo Bay and watched the Japanese sign the surrender terms at the end of World War II. <laughs> Well, that's about as big a thrill as anybody could have. I didn't know you were quite that much of a war hero. Wouldn't have cracked all those bum jokes about you. <laughs> You're gonna have quite a job following this chap here, Sailor. Yes, sir. Now, Sailor, come down out of the rigging. I wanna ask you a few things. <laughs> In your Navy career, what was your most harrowing experience? I guess that was the time I forgot to salute an officer. You're lucky they didn't make you walk the plank. Eh? Did you get a demotion? Oh, no, they can't do that to me. <laughs> there's nothing lower than the seaman apprentice. Why do you say you weren't demoted? Because there's nothing lower than the seaman apprentice. <laughs> well, Fred, now that you're retired, how are you spending your time? Feeding pigeons? No, I've been writing a book for the last two years. Oh, you're an admiral, all right. <laughs> now, what's the, what's the book about? Well, its title is Combat Command, the American Aircraft Carriers in the Pacific War. Admiral Bill Halsey has written a foreword for me, and it'll be on the book stands on the 27th of January. Well, put me down for one of the first copies, will you? <laughs> Anybody doesn't buy a copy, we'll have them court-martialed. <laughs> Do you have any advice that would benefit our sailor here, Admiral? Well, yes, I'd advise him to make the most of his opportunities in the Navy by advancing himself, going through the trade schools and taking the correspondence courses which are available to everybody in the Navy. What about you, sailor? <laughs> sailor, what advice have you got for the Admiral here? <laughs> Seaman don't have advices for admirals. <laughs> go on, go ahead. Go ahead, as one sailor to another, slip him some advice. Tell him where's the best place to find some girls. Uh... <laughs> Would you say uh, Hollywood, Hollywood and Vine? Well, uh, I've always had pretty good luck on her Sunset and Gower. <laughs> Well, there you are, Admiral. <laughs> How soon will you be over there? No, I'm not interested in that anymore. Well, you're retired, all right. <laughs> well, uh, I must say that the Navy has acquitted itself admirably here tonight. Now, gentlemen, you're going to weigh anchors for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. You run your $20 into more than the other couples, and you get a chance at the big money. Benjamin, remind our listeners who's ahead. The housewife and the congressman are ahead with $40.
Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected Smith's and Jones as your category. Now, you have $20. How much do you want to try? Ten. Um, I think we can gamble on ten, yes. What is the name of the Jones girl who recently married David O. Selznick? Jennifer, wasn't it? Jennifer Jones is right. Yes, they're on their way with $30, Groucho. <laughs> how much of the 30 will you try? Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen, huh? Okay. What was the name of the famous Smith who was a friend of Pocahontas? John Smith. Captain John Smith is right. They're climbing now. They have $45. All right, you got $45. How much are you going to try? Here's your third question. 20? I think 20 would be yes. 20. <laughs> what is the face name of the former golf champion named Jones? Um, Bobby. Bobby Jones is right. They're really on their way now. They have $65. All right, you're shooting along with $65, and here's your last chance now to beat the other couples. How much of the $65 you going to shoot? 30 35 <laughs> $30. $30, then. $30. <laughs> you're going to wind up in irons. You know that. <laughs> what was the name of a famous Smith who was a governor of New York? He wore a brown derby. Al Smith. Al Smith is all right. Total of $95. Take hands with the Admiral there, huh? And that means that the sailor and the Admiral, with their $95, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth thousand dollar question. Yes, no matter what make of car you now drive or expect to buy, don't make a decision until you visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer on Tuesday, January 10th. For that is the big day to see this truly new model, the new DeSoto. A car with feature after feature that's new. A car whose beauty of line and great performance will do more than all the talk in the world to thrill you and your entire family. A car so smartly designed that you'll want it standing in front of your home. A car so skillfully designed that it brings a whole new concept of driving ease, of roominess. As for economy of operation, here again, mere words cannot do justice to the power at your command of its high compression engine, to its long life valves that add thousands of trouble-free miles to your driving pleasure, to its bigger, easier to apply brakes, to the tiptoe hydraulic shift and fluid drive that lets you drive without shifting. This year, more than ever before, it's DeSoto that is pointing the way to automotive beauty, economy, comfort, with not just a few changes, but an entirely new model. So next Tuesday, January 10th, make sure you see this new DeSoto at your DeSoto Plymouth dealers. And here are the sailor and the admiral, the winning couple, all ready for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question, Groucho. All right, here we go for $1,000. Ready? I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on one single answer between you, so think carefully, and please, no help from the audience. Here it is. When George Washington was given command of the Continental Army, his commission as general was signed by the president of the Continental Congress. Who was this president of the Continental Congress? Okay, what is the answer you two have decided upon? I think it was John Adam. No, I'm sorry. It was John Hancock. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $95 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. You Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, You Bet Your Life, presented by the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And don't forget... 
The big question will be worth $1,500. Well, it's time to let Bing Crosby have the air, so good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. When driving your car, don't depend on the other guy. Suppose he's depending on you. This is George Fenton signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Okay, that was uh, an interesting thing to do. If you uh, followed along, and I assume you did or you wouldn't be watching up to this point, um, a lot of stuff got cut. Um, they, they were jumping all over the place in different parts of the script. He was um, going over jokes that he, I guess, was supposed to say but decided not to say. He added in other jokes that were not in the script. So uh, what most people don't realize is that show was scripted, very actually heavily scripted. Um, they didn't include the audio commercials in the script. Um, George Fenneman, I guess, had those off to the side and read them from a different location, so they didn't need them in the actual script that uh, Groucho was following. Uh, and you don't actually, if you watch the TV versions, you don't see him looking at or reading a script, but yet they had it, and it was off to the side, uh, and he could look over and he could see where, we, where he was supposed to be. But being Groucho, he didn't always follow the script, and so there are plenty of places where uh, jokes got said and jokes didn't, got, didn't get said. Uh, but I thought it was interesting to take an original script and go through it like that so those of you who are very familiar with the program could see how it was done. So that's my uh, birthday gift to myself and to the audience of the Good Old Days of Radio Show. I want to thank uh, producer Daniel and his wife Anna for making this happen. Um, they spent considerable time today setting up cameras and getting everything just right so that we could do this and make it come off so that it would be entertaining for you all to watch uh, at home, wherever you are watching this. So... Uh, that's good. You can spread the word about this episode. It is unique and different, and I'm sure a lot of people who um, have never seen anything like this before would get a, a big kick out of seeing it. So tell your friends, tell your old-time radio friends to, to give this podcast a watch. Usually I say give it a listen. This time I can say give it a watch. And we might do something like this again in the future. I don't know, but I wanted to do it ever since we sort of did it earlier in the year. Um, this time we did it much more professionally and, um, I'm sure it came out quite well. So, um, we're coming to the end of the year for the good old days of radio show. I think we have one more before the end of the year and then it's happy 2024. So I will just leave you with all of, all of this that uh, we've said and done today. And thank you all for being part of the show. Until next time, when it's only going to be audio, back to audio again. Until next time, this is John Tefteller in the good old days of radio show saying thanks for listening. And today, thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>